morning, everyone. Welcome to the Cushionet Avenue International Marketplace. We uh, uh, we are pleased uh, to have Governor Patrick with us today, who's uh, uh, bearing good news that uh, he will explain to us in a moment. But uh, first, I wanted to um, to uh, to acknowledge a few folks here who have been hard at work on Cushionet Avenue. Uh, over the last couple of years, thanks to uh, some terrific funding that we've received from uh, from the state, from the Patrick administration, uh, uh, not the least of whom is uh, Ron LaBelle, our uh, Commissioner of Public Infrastructure. <laughs> our, uh, our Director of uh, Housing and Community Development, Pat Sullivan, who has joined us in the tent now. I want to thank uh, everyone from the Economic Development Council, uh, especially Director Derek Santos, who worked so hard uh, on uh, on the Cushionet Avenue project right from the, the word go. Where's uh, Where's Derek? There is in the corner, and his entire team, very hardworking team at the EDC, uh, our city planner uh, Jill McLean, who's way in the back. Come on in, Jill. Let's hear it for Jill. Uh, and, uh, and many others to thank. I want to uh, acknowledge uh, our, uh, the folks from uh, organized labor, a number of whom are, uh, are here, Sonny, Ron Rayum, others uh, who have uh, been big supporters of what we're trying to do in the city, not just on uh, this project, but so many others. So thanks, guys, for, uh, for all of your support. So as, I, as I've said so many times before, uh, a city is only as good as the desire of people to move into it. In other words, if we if we are a place that people choose to live in because of our high quality of life, because of our educational uh, system, because uh, because of our cultural offerings, we will succeed. The converse is also true. If we are not a city that uh, is more desirable than other places, uh, then people will leave and we'll, we will suffer decline. And we have suffered that kind of decline uh, over many years. Uh, so you know, what it's about, what we're trying to do here more than anything else is, is, is to embrace the idea that we are competing with, with cities, not just in Massachusetts, but across the world. Uh, that we have to offer cities, offer folks something a little bit different, something a little bit better. Uh, and the way we do it is we build on our assets. Much of what we do here is, is, is to embrace those, our strengths and accentuate them. It starts with our harbor. We have a deep water port that is the home to, to uh, the most successful uh, commercial fishing port in America. We are positioning ourselves, thanks to the tremendous support of this man more than anybody else, uh, to become uh, the hub of the American offshore wind industry. Uh, we are a growing cargo port. Uh, we are a growing recreational boating port. We, we build our capacity by and build our competitiveness by doing the kind of hard lifting it takes to reform uh, an urban school system. We're in the middle of that right now. Uh, we're, through, we're going through a tough patch right now, and, but, we're, we're, but there's no choice. We, uh, and we believe that in the long run, we're going to have a school system that's second to none uh, in uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's what's what we're striving for. That's the kind of, we're striving for the kind of school system that will attract people to New Bedford and not be the, it will be the reason why people move into New Bedford and not out. Uh, and we're also trying to raise the city's quality of life all over the place. Uh, people are coming back to our cities across America and across the world. People are rediscovering uh, the, the pleasures of living in the neighborhood in close proximity to friends and, and with chances to, uh, uh, to enjoy a, a real social uh, and connected life. Um, it's all about so what cities offer that other places don't, that rural areas and suburbs don't offer, is a, is a sense of belonging that can't be uh, artificially made. Uh, and so our, our goal here uh, in terms of quality of life is to, to make our streets more walkable, to, uh, to make them more inviting, to make them safe. Safety comes first, of course, but so do the little things. The little things that we sometimes take for granted. Pleasant walks include nice trees, pedestrian lighting, nice streetscapes, uh, surfaces free of graffiti and trash, um, and interesting places to go. We're, we are here right now uh, in a neighborhood that has great bones. It has walkable dimensions with preserved streetscapes, lots of retail that has been there and churned over over the last 
100 years, really, that has been an ethnic melting pot since the days when our textile mills were humming at full steam. Uh, and we're looking to, to rebuild that, to recreate that, because we know we have, we're, we're this far away from really making it take off. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've gotten tremendous support from the state. We've grown jobs uh, in the North End, in this, this area, because of it. Uh, we've also spurred private investment because of the state investment that has come with it. And we're very grateful for the support that we've gotten from our legislative leaders. And today there are, uh, uh, we have, uh, we're in Bill Strauss's district. Bill is the chair of the Transportation uh, Committee in the state legislature, the Joint Transportation Committee. Uh, but he's also a big supporter of what we're trying to do here in uh, the North End. Tony Cabral, the chair of the bonding committee on the House side, tremendous support from him as well as from Bob Cazera, who also represents the North End, who couldn't be here today, along with Senator Montigny. Um, I want to also note uh, Dana Ribeiro, uh, the Ward 4 counselor, is here as well. All big supporters of what we're trying to do. The biggest supporter of all uh, is our governor. Uh, our governor recognizes that change is driven at the local level, that cities Cities need to choose their own destinies, and the state can't step into the shoes of cities to make things happen. He realizes that, that much of the best, that state government operates best when it, uh, when it provides resources and guidance and service of the cities, uh, the, the larger goals of cities. So it's true in New Bedford, it's true in Boston, it's true of every other city. Um, his economic development strategy is, is perfectly phrased. It's choosing to compete. Choosing, if we choose, as we have done to compete, the state will be there for us. And it has been under the Patrick administration more than any other gubernatorial administration in the state's history, frankly. <laughs> the governor has been with us as we've, cho we've chosen to compete in offshore wind. The governor has extended himself to, to fund a $100 million asset on our waterfront. Uh, that will be purpose built for the industry and will have a load capacity uh, that will be unexceeded by any in, in the Western world. Uh, the governor has been there when we've sought to develop the downtown. The governor has been there when we've, when we've worked uh, on, on highway construction and rail projects throughout the region. The governor has led the way on South Coast Rail. Uh, for the first time, we have a governor who actually is putting his money where his mouth is. We've had a parade of governors over the years who've played of both parties, frankly. It's not just the Republicans, it's both. Who have paid lip service to the, to the idea, to pay lip service in support of South Coast Rail. I and mean, it's almost been the playbook for, uh, for statewide candidates over the last 20 years, and folks have grown cynical about those claims of assertions of support. Uh, this governor has actually stepped up, and that is exactly what we, the best way we can uh, expect of public serv uh, of public servants, that they that they that they remain true to their word, and this governor uh, has done that. So it is, uh, and it is the case here in the North End. As we've tried to develop the North End, the governor has been there uh, along the way, uh, every step, uh, and today uh, he's got some more to say about that. So, governor, you've been a fantastic friend. Uh, of us here in the city. And uh, uh, without any further ado, I want to introduce New Bedford's great friend, Governor Deval Patrick. Thank you, Governor. Mr. Mayor, Chairman Cabral, Chairman Strauss, Council Ribeiro, ladies and gentlemen, with an introduction like that, one of two things are about to happen. Either I am running for re-election, <laughs> Or the mayor wants another check. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I, we had a nice walk um, just now, uh, and uh, I felt a little like the Pied Piper. We started out just the two of us. By the time we got down to the tent, there was a whole crowd of people, um, most of whom uh, uh, either uh, work on this project or projects like it, or have an investment in this uh, in this community. Uh, in Chairman Strauss's neighborhood. And it's really about having that investment. That's an investment not just of money, it's an investment of heart, an investment of vision about tomorrow and about how we build a better tomorrow. I'm here to announce that uh, this wonderful Akushnet uh, project um, needs to meet its next stage. And we're going to help do that with $1.19 million uh, from the state. And we're delighted to be able to help.
I, I want to thank, I want you to know, first of all, it's not my money. It's your money. And it's money, it's, it's, it's money made, and it's money, well, that's what, it, that's what I'm here about. Um, it's money made available through appropriations from the legislature. Uh, so I want to particularly acknowledge the members who are here for their support of the MassWorks program, which is an enormously high-impact program. It is about catalyzing private investment. It's about what the public needs to do, what we need to do together in order to encourage private investors to put their money and their time into improving and strengthening this neighborhood. And that strategy is a working strategy. Our strategy for growth in this commonwealth has been based on three things, investing in education, in innovation, and in infrastructure. Education because we are the global leader in high education, most especially, and number one in the nation in K-12 edu education. We're at or near the top of the world in math and science. And so we have to cultivate our educational resources, and we also have to meet kids where they are who are stuck in those achievement gaps all around the Commonwealth, mostly kids who are poor or who speak English as a second language or who have special needs. We have to pay attention to all of our children because they are, as you know, our future. We invest in innovation because there are a handful of industries that depend on that kind of concentration of brain power. You know what many of them are, but not everybody is focused on the fact that that's why we're growing manufacturing again. Manufacturing in the Commonwealth is growing 50% faster than the national growth rate and seven times the rate it did in the previous administration, including right over here in our neighborhood, in this neighborhood. And that relates back to education as well, because many of those employers are telling us that they can't find people to do the jobs they have with the skills they need. And so we have to focus in on meeting those needs. And finally, we invest in infrastructure, which I always describe as the unglamorous work of government, but it supports everything else. I mean, you may find that talking about uh, streetscapes and benches and waste bins and trees and so forth is not as exciting as, uh, as securing the future of the offshore wind industry, which we are also doing uh, together here in, uh, uh, in New Bedford. But it is also what contributes to quality of life and, as the mayor said, the willingness of people to invest their time, their money, their future in this and other communities. That's the strategy. Education innovation, infrastructure. And it's the reason why we're growing faster than most other states. We are at, in the last uh, quarter, growing 69% faster than the national growth rate. We're first in America in student achievement, as I mentioned, but also health care coverage, in veteran services, in entrepreneurial activity, in venture funding per capita, in economic competitiveness, in energy efficiency, and much more. We've balanced our budgets working with the, uh, with the legislature, so we've been doing this responsibly and achieved the highest bond rating in the history of the Commonwealth. So this is about how we build a stronger future and do it together. And we do it project by project. And I just want to uh, thank you for indulging me for uh, offering some context, because none of these projects stands alone, and none of them happens alone. So, Mr. Mayor, I want to thank you and your team for being marvelous partners. I want to thank again the chairs, uh, and through them the delegation and all the members of the legislature for supporting these kinds of investments. And I ask you all, stay focused. Stay focused. Because we have to be about not what we do just for the next election cycle or the next news cycle, but what we do for the next generation. Thank you all for being here. Governor, thank you. I can tell you uh, here and now that we will use every penny of that $1.19 million well. It will uh, it'll go to induce more investment, more private sector investment, and grow more jobs and, and, and reactivate this neighborhood in ways that, it, that we haven't seen in generations here. And so thank you very much for all of your support. Uh, I want to call up uh, the state rep from this district, Bill Strauss, uh, the chair of the Transportation Committee, the Legislative Joint Transportation Committee, uh, to, uh, to say a few words, not just about his district, but also the trajectory that we're on and 
uh, as a, a Commonwealth and investing in, in cities here, not just in New Bedford, but, but elsewhere. Bill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, of course, to uh, our constant friend, uh, Governor Patrick, who in many ways, not just for New Bedford, but for the region, has kept uh, our issues at the top of his list his entire term, uh, two terms, uh, as, as governor. The only uh, technical correction I would add to the mayor's comments, I know you want to be bipartisan and it always has a place, but um, when we finally got a Democrat as governor, we began to have progress with South Coast Rail. It's just an observation. <laughs> Uh, so that would be my only correction, but uh, uh, once again with today's announcement, uh, we can see uh, the benefits of investing in communities like this. Transportation, of course, given my assignment, has a special role uh, because of what it means and the connections that we're entitled to have uh, in this region with uh, the rest of the state and uh, as much as can occur in advancing South Coast Rail, uh, I know that this governor will do that. I'm honored just to be a part of uh, today's announcement and what it represents in a broader context that we will continue to keep working uh, to advance uh, neighborhoods uh, like this and so that uh, the millions of people who pass by constantly just a couple of hundred yards from here will look at this as a gateway and an entrance into this wonderful city. So thank you again for including me. Uh, good to see everybody. Um, another, uh, another major supporter of, uh, of the city's efforts to, uh, to beautify its streetscapes and really uh, to, to draw private investment is, is Representative Tony Cabral. Tony is, uh, ha not only represents more or less the southern half of the city, but he's also the chairman of the House's Bonding Committee. And uh, like Bill Strauss, a huge supporter of the MassWorks program. As the governor points out, uh, this program wouldn't be in effect without the support of the legislator, legislature uh, and the support of uh, representatives like uh, Tony Cabral uh, and Bill Strauss. So Tony, uh, thanks again for your support and I ask you to come up and say a few words. Well, good morning. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Governor, for being here. Again, bringing a nice check for us. It's wonderful to have someone in the corner office really that understands cities, that understands in particular inner cities and the kind of work that we need to do to, be, to bring these neighborhoods back. I mean, I, uh, even though technically this is out of my district, I consider New Bedford Hall my district. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. <laughs> because I am deeply passionate about the city and, and this neighborhood tells me a lot because I lived for many years a few blocks away from, from here, up the street. <clears throat> and it's this kind of work is important to really bring this neighborhood and going up north through Cushion Avenue to bring this neighborhood and bring them together and make them, again, reclaim their, their streets, reclaim their neighborhoods, and make this uh, uh, pedestrian friendly. I, to me, it's the project makes this whole area uh, uh, pedestrian-friendly uh, uh, place. It allows neighbors to come back to the street, shop on the small businesses across the Cushion Avenue, and yes, be able to buy almost any product that they need, including groceries. Many years ago, if you remember, a few blocks from here, we used to have a supermarket called A&P. Well, I used to shop there when I lived up in this area, and today we have again a supermarket on the same location. It's not owned by a big chain. Uh, but it, it's owned by, it's family owned, but it is a supermarket. It's not just your variety store. And that's important to, for the coming back of this neighborhood. As the mayor mentioned, uh, several decades back, this used to be a very vibrant place. People walked, they could bank on a cushion avenue. Today, they, technically they can, but they have to go further north to do it. But it used to be uh, right here on the corner of Sawyer Street, used to be a bank, a, a bank today is a, a small store across uh, the A&P used to be another bank, Bay Bank at one time, before that was Merchants Bank. Uh, and the history goes on, as you can see, uh, I know the area very well and I care deeply about this area even though technically uh, falls slightly outside of my district. But 
this kind of investment is, is the kind of commitment that the governor has, 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 has done for us in New Bedford and throughout the state. This MassWorks program has invested 50% of its funds in gateway cities. It's not a program just for gateway cities. It's been a commitment of, of Governor Patrick and Secretary Bialaki to, to take this MassWorks program and really invest where you're going to get the most you can for your buck. And that's been in gateway cities. 50% of the funding has been in gateway cities. So, Governor, thank you for that strategy. Thank you for that commitment. That's very important for us to really uh, make these things happen. So I'm delighted that this is going to move another block or two up. And that's great. Uh, once we move another block up, it's really in Representative Cazares' district. And he unfortunately could not be here today. Uh, he sends his regards. Uh, and uh, the other person that actually called me this morning to make sure I would uh, make a mention is my senator, your senator, Senator Mantigny. Uh, the Senate is in session, uh, and they have a caucus before that session, so that's the reason why he was not able to be here. But I want you to know he's been a great partner uh, with us, with the House members. He's been a great Senate partner, partner with us to really uh, work for the city, to put the kinds of funds I needed in Mass Works and other programs. More is coming. I like these checks, Governor. We want to want you to come between now and December uh, at least every month with a check. So thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you, Tony. Uh, there are two people that I, I emphatically wanted to thank today, and that is uh, Secretary Greg Bilecki, uh, who has done uh, uh, tremendous work uh, all across the state in shepherding uh, state support for projects uh, like these and, and so many others. And uh, I know the governor uh, feels especially uh, proud of, of the, the secretary's work in, in spurring investment, uh, all sorts of investment across industry sectors uh, throughout the, uh, the Commonwealth. And it's happened here very successfully in the Bedford. I, I, we owe Secretary Bilek a, a debt of gratitude for, for really digging into the details of this project and so many others and finding a way to make it happen. Uh, likewise, Victoria McGuire, who runs the Mass Works. Uh, program. I don't know if Victoria's here today. There she is. Out in the back. You can come in, Victoria. <laughs> Victoria's been a huge supporter of New Bedford. She has uh, gotten to know us very well over the years and has really made things happen for us. So, Victoria, thank you very much for all of, all of your great help. Uh, with all that, I understand that we have a, a couple minutes for questions. Uh, the governor, I think uh, they're probably going to ask you more questions than they will of, right. of me. Uh, anybody? What are some of the specifics that we can see in action of where this money is going to go? Well, so, um, so it is uh, more or less going to be a continuation of the great uh, streetscape work that has already been done. These plazas. Uh, were built with state funds from this MassWorks program, along with an earmark that, of the legis from the legislature that uh, these two gentlemen secured. Um, uh, moving up the avenue, you'll see more, more trees, more benches, more pedestrian lighting, more nice trash bins. Um, you'll see uh, uh, more realignments of intersections as, as necessary with natural materials being used. I mean, at some level, people might say, well, you know, you're just trying to make the place look pretty. And I suppose the answer is in part, well, exactly. We, we were very proud of our city, and it should, uh, we want it to look better than any, anywhere else. So that's part of it. But um, you know, we also want, again, to, to, to have uh, environments, urban environments, where people like to be. Right? So we all want to be in a place that's safe, that is hospitable, that feels enclosed, that feels interesting to be in. Uh, it's certainly the case with our downtown, but we believe that uh, it should also be the case with other neighborhoods in our city, especially this one, which has so much potential. Uh, and it's a way, ultimately, of attracting investment and growing jobs. And that's, uh, that's, that's the ultimate goal, uh, to, to provide a higher quality of life uh, for everybody and to, uh, to have something to build upon. Can I just build yeah. on that, Mr. Mayor? So my understanding is that the, the hairdresser on the corner across the street is planning to make uh, investments in the facade. Um, on account of, uh, uh, or really to complement the, uh, the infrastructure investments here. There's a pizza parlor next to it, which either has or soon will uh, have outdoor seating. 
um, as a part of the uh, um, uh, uh, the sidewalk. Um, uh, I guess you've allowed or are going to allow. So maybe you don't know this yet. Uh, so yeah, sure. Si sidewalk uh, dining. Um, we had a chance to visit the um, uh, the uh, what will be the Cape Verdean Cultural Center. Um, in a theater, a no vaudeville, vaudeville theater on this side of the uh, street, I guess that'd be the west side of the street going up, um, where they're going to put, put uh, considerable um, investment in over the next um, several years. The Salvation Army building, you told me, was coming down, ha is down, and the developers uh, is making plans for that, uh, for that space. And this is the point. We are looking at how to put public infrastructure investment in in a way that catalyzes private, catalyzes private uh, investment, um, improves quality of life, and creates jobs. Is there an estimated return on this investment? I mean, you don't grow more than a million dollars or something without an expected return. Yeah. Victoria probably knows the answer to that, but she's hiding out there. Hey, Sean. I mean, I think it's safe to say that the return is over many years. It's not. Uh, it's, it's hard to quantify, um, and I think it's you know the these investment decisions are are, are carefully made by uh, by people like Victoria and uh, uh, as well as uh, Greg Bielecki. The question was about return on investment, Victoria. Uh, how how much the extent that you can describe it or even quantify it uh, will uh, private investment be induced or catalyzed as a result of uh, this public investment? Go ahead. Go when we're evaluating projects like this one, and especially ones that are linear and impact entire neighborhoods, we look for two things. We look for partnerships with the city, and the city has made an enormous investment of their own time and services and money. So in our minds, that's a great partnership, and already we're using state dollars to the best way possible because they're, the city's partnering with us. We also look for a return uh, on investment with private and investment in new businesses or keeping existing businesses here and allowing them to expand. So the city has provided us with some estimates. Um, hundred $100 million dollars could, could come from this. Will it happen tomorrow? Probably not, but you'll see incremental change and that's what these these long projects are, are designed to do is to help support the small businesses, restore a a storefront or do something like that that will help bring new traffic down here and also connect to the the market basket and the Fairhaven Mills project so I think that you'll see a ton of improvement over time how to quantify it is tough uh, but there'll certainly be new new investment along the corridor. I have a question for Governor Patrick. Um, is this just to help the businesses that are already here? Do you see a potential for job growth, more businesses growing in we do, and I think the, the converse is true. If you don't make these investments, the businesses will go, and the people will go. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a virtual uh, uh, cycle. And you also have to, I think, uh, see the connection between the north end and the neighborhood closer to, uh, uh, closer to downtown, as Victoria was, uh, um, was saying. It doesn't happen immediately. Um, in every case, but it happens over uh, uh, over time, and it's a demonstration to the many private investors who were here today and uh, and others that this mayor, this team, and this governor care about the future of this community. Mayor Mitchell, I have a question. Um, initially, six million dollars was needed for the second phase of the project. Is this part of phase two? And if so, where's the other four point? Uh huh. Oh, the skunk at the garden party. All right. So no, so no. Look, these things happen. These ha things happen incrementally, and there will be city investment that comes along with it. Uh, we're trying. What we're trying to do, as the governor tries to do, we all try to do in government in, in this era, in an era of diminished resources, is to stretch every dollar as far as it can go. So what we we have done is sharpened our pencils and figure out what are uh, what are, in our view, the most the highest yield features of uh, of this project. Highest yield in terms of potential job growth and potential growth to attract uh, potential for attracting visitors and that's that's what we've uh, strived to uh, to achieve all right great thank, thank you, you everybody New Bedford cable network. Your connection to the Whaling City.